racing went professional, Plymouth was there. And today, the consistent winners include the Ronnie Sox Buddy Martin team from North Carolina, the ace from Akron, Arlen Vanke, the tough Oklahoman Don Grother, the beauty from Colorado, Judy Lilly, and many more, all pros in a tough sport, a sport born in the wastelands of Southern California and nurtured carefully by tough sportsmen. That's where drag racing came from. In the 30s and into the 40s, cars raced against the clock in straightaway time trials on the dusty, windswept dry lakes and salt flats. Men like Hack Miller, Vic Edelbrock, Ed Iskandarian, Paul Schieffer, Wally Parks, and many others held to their belief that their sport did have a place. And the Southern California Timing Association led the way toward growth and progress in drag racing. By 1946, SCTA had some 25 clubs and a major meet would draw 200 or more cars. The stock car, not too competitive in those days, but the drag racer is a man of ingenuity. If it did not run fast enough in the morning, then he went to work modifying, creating, trimming, honing. Give him a couple hours and he's 10 miles an hour faster. In a word, creativity with speed, the sole object. This was the look, flatheads, four bangers, running with V8s and even V12s on inactive military airstrips. A lot of $300 mustering out checks put the hot rodders back on wheels. Burning speed from a rolling start. It had a special look, but also had a special performance. Tuned exhaust. And sometimes, a fella get a little out of shape. But at 45, 50, the shape wasn't too bad. The pits, they've always looked like the pits. Flat your back, searching for the problem. Then came men like Stu Hilburn, magicians with carburetors, camshafts, fuels, and the like. Some real motor science started to show up in drag racing. They tamed the V8s, added streamlined chassis, and proceeded to break the magic 150 mile an hour barrier. In 1951, the National Hot Rod Association was born with the aim of national organization for the sake of safety and longevity of the sport. The NHRA sending out safety safaris in the early 50s to sell drag racing, put drag racing on the track, keep it off the street. A ribbon cutting for the first national drag racing championship. By the middle 50s, drag racing had its ground rules and definition. An acceleration contest over a quarter mile distance from a standing start, a single car run, or a competitive run between two cars. And the custom cars came on in the 50s. Today, it's a $200 million a year industry. And you think this looks like an anteater? Well, yes, it does, if you know what an anteater looks like. But I'll bet you never saw one run this fast. And even in the beginning years, a fellow needed a push now and then. If he lost, well, sometimes dignity required him to take the shortest route home. Jack Brabham and Colin Chapman might be surprised to learn that dragsters were being pushed quite fast in the 50s. In those three days, a fella could warm his tires in reverse if it saved time. Ingenuity, the real heart of drag racing. Some of the lucky ones get some help from a computer now and then, but the sport is still trial and error. And that's the fun of it. That's the fun of it, sometimes.
1951, the first Chrysler Hemi engine came on the scene. It took a couple of years to harness the power of this giant of an engine. But most Dragon men realized this would be the foundation power plant for years to come. The search for power produced more and more twin-engine dragsters, a few very fast, a lot with promise and all with mechanical bugs. As more horsepower became available, the drag tire started getting more attention. Produced very little smoke, very little in those days compared to the tires of the middle 60s. 1959, drag racing made its appearance at the Riverside Raceway in Southern California. A lot of action, a lot of laughs, running downhill on the back straight. This was the year that Don Garlitz and Jack Chrisman really went after the speed records in their Hemi dragsters. Chrisman Sidewinder had the crowd standing and roaring. And the stock cars were near their own classification as drag racing headed for a new era. Rules were expanded and a driver had to be careful about running out of his bracket. Hold it, circle and wait. Sometimes the wiser decision. By 1963, the stock car had its place. The grandstands in a population explosion. And in the NHRA Nationals, a pair of super stock wedges for the championship. In the 64 Winter Nationals, Don Garlitz, the Florida Swamp Rat, relied on heavy power and swept to a wing victory in the top fuel class. The 1964 Nationals India again, a pair of wedges running for the new Super Stock Class Championship, doing it automatically. <laughs> 1966, again Pomona, NHRA Winter Nationals, a tough team comes in from North Carolina. Buddy Martin, team manager. Ronnie Sox, driver. Jake King. Master engine builder. This also the meet in which a pretty Visalia, California housewife, Shirley Shahan, became the first woman ever to win a major drag racing championship as she defeated Joe Smith in another Henny Plymouth and took the super stock title. Sucks and Martin, they turn Henny Power loose in their gas burning bunny car, winning their class and become the talk of the sport. Super stock story of 1966, Jer Stahl slammed his Plymouth to three major victories in a row, including the Nationals at Indy. Jer Stahl, Super Stock Champ, Spring Nationals, Nationals, and World Finals. 1967, Thunder Valley, Bristol, Tennessee. The boss, the real boss, the pro ranks growing, best drag equipment ever. National Hot Rod Association, Spring National. Body sucks. Other lane, Ron Mancini, another Plymouth. A record crowd to watch. And it's Ronnie Suck winning the Super Stock Eliminator title. So we go on to Indianapolis for the NHRA Nationals. Next, Ronnie Sox takes on the old pro, Grunty Jenkins, driving a Camaro. Jenkins, one of the best ever at the Christmas tree. Ronnie Sox had the power in his Plymouth. He knew it, but he also knew the light was critical. And Sox is a half breath too quick. A red light, and Grunty is the winner in Super Stock in 1967 National. In 68 Winter Nationals, Pomona, record crowd, more than 80,000 attendees. They saw Al Joniak in his Mustang take on Dave Red, wedge-powered Plymouth Super Stocker. Red pulls three car lengths ahead, but the red light gives the victory to Joniak. Then Jim Warren, the big Bakersfield Ridge Runner, wins the Top Fuel Championship in the Warren Coburn Miller Rail. A solo run at the first major drag championship for Big Jim Warren. You'd think he'd take it easy. But 
but he didn't. He stood on it because he wanted a taste. The fruits of victory, his first big one in drag racing. Back to Indy again, 1968, NHRA Nationals, first time total prize monies for a meet go past $150,000. Again, a Plymouth showdown, Super Stock Finals, Arlen Banky, Akron, Ohio, against Wally Booth, Midwest Auto Special. Banky left lane. Banky's got to catch him. Akron Arnie for the win. Take a look. Less than a yard for the victory. Arlen Vanke. Superstock. Come out of there. Let me shake your hand. Congratulations. Thank you. This is the first big, big title for you this year? Yes, it is, sir. What was the difference for you at the Nationals, Arlen? Well, it just seemed like the car was ready. I felt good, and it was my day. And no troubles along the way, no exciting moments? None whatsoever, no troubles. Everything was exciting because the car was running fine and so was everybody else. What does this mean to you, this national championship? I know that you're certainly not a newcomer. You've been in the sport for a long time. It must be a rewarding moment for you. Well, it means to me I can go home and won't have to listen to anybody saying, why did so-and-so beat you? What did you do this wrong for? I can go home and feel good. I'll bet you can, Arlen. Congratulations again and good luck to you. Thank you. Nationals at Indianapolis double-A fuel finals John Garlitz the swamp rat trying to become the first man ever to win three nationals against the tough Kreitz Greer and Donovan Fueller teammates savored the fruits of victory, the Sox and Martin team was on the road. Ronnie Sox and Buddy Martin, prime figures in a rolling research program for Plymouth, making one of their clinic appearances. Buddy Martin. Yes, there was. As you know, in the past, we've had the... So that there is their purpose, to help performance enthusiasts with the latest tips on safety, handling, 